Okay, so um, uh, so I guess uh, for today's call, I, I, I'm just uh, planning to give an update on to TP or total perspective vortex or TPV for short. And some of you may have, I, I suspect that many of you have, would have heard of it before, but uh, it may might be new to some of you. So uh, I'll go through a kind of introduction uh, that might, uh, or a quick uh, recap of what it is, and then uh, go into a kind of a practical uh, demonstration of how to set it up. So for those of you who haven't heard of TPV before, uh, it's a Galaxy plugin for dynamically routing jobs to appropriate destinations with appropriate CPU, memory, and other settings. So most Galaxy admins at some point uh, and users, I guess, have grappled with this issue uh, of how best to allocate resources for a particular job. Uh, and TPV helps you with that exact issue. issue. So I'll provide a brief overview uh, and we'll see how we can set up TPV on a fresh installation of Galaxy, uh, how to do some basic things with it. And uh, we'll look at some of the latest and plans happenings with TPV. So um, TPV comes uh, in a, Ron, yeah. Ron, we're, uh, we're seeing the non-presentation um, mode of the slides. I don't know if you were uh, If I go into presentation mode, I think it will be, might be too big, the screen, so. All right, I just don't know if you've already switched slides and we were just looking at the wrong window. Never mind, sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. So, so it, TPV comes in a pip installable package that you can install in your Galaxy environment. Uh, and once done, you can essentially just use the job conf to uh, point to TPV as a destination. It's just a dynamic job rule or a dynamic uh, Python dynamic destination. Uh, and so once you configure that, you point to a TPV rules file, uh, which is just a YAML file containing the resource requirements for each tool. So, so how do you define these uh, basic resource requirements? So it, a typical TPV config might look like this. So you simply define the tools, uh, the cores, memory, and GPU requirements and other environment settings. And you also de define the destinations that are available to you. So once you, once you switch to TPV, you don't need to define your destinations in job conf anymore. You, you just define it in TPV. Um, so, so once you've done that, uh, I mean, straight away, you might notice, for example, that in this Bowtie 2 case, uh, that the mem is a computed expression. So mem is cores into four. So it's just a Python expression that will be dynamically evaluated. So all fields in TPD are Python expressions. Uh, and you can simply you can simply provide a constant value. Just it just happens to be valid Python. So, but that gives you a fair amount of flexibility in what you can express as a TPV value. Uh, so, uh, so in this particular example, uh, we have uh, two destinations, and then TPV will fit whichever destination it is that will fit this tool. So in this case, I think both destinations fit just fine because it just needs four cores and uh, 24 uh, gigs of RAM. Okay, so how do you now exert greater control over this? So what you can do here is to use something called tags with which you can express preference or version to a particular destination. So tags themselves have no intrinsic meaning. They're just uh, matched up by TPV using fixed rules. So for example, here we define a high mem tag uh, and we say that it's a required tag or rather we prefer that tag. And we also say that the spades tool rejects the offline tag. So any uh, destination that has the offline tag will be immediately rejected. So that's a simple way of uh, taking a node offline, for example. Uh, and similarly, you could express a preference for a particular node. In this case, we say prefer high mem, and it will search for a destination that also matches uh, that requirement. 
So simply by combining uh, all these tags, you can express preference aversion uh, and thus scheduling. Uh, TPV can also be configured to instantly reload its configuration. So for example, if you had to take a node off offline, you can do so instantly uh, for maintenance. How do you do that? Sorry? So I was going to say, I think in, in once or twice that I ran into this, it uh, had to re reboot the, the job. Uh, Handler, yeah. Uh, so there is a setting that you have to configure, which is to watch job rules. Uh, we'll come to that actually. Otherwise, it, uh, the files aren't monitored by Galaxy. So you, you have to manually enable that. Uh, okay. So, uh, so let's now look at how you might conditionally change the job requirement. So again, taking advantage of the fact that TPV expressions are all Python expressions, we can just define an if conditional, uh, a YAML field, but this is this evaluates to a value. And if it's evaluates to true, then these settings are applied. So essentially we can see that there are conditional uh, uh, you can apply resources conditionally, tags conditionally, and you can also have contextualized error. Um, okay, uh, and finally, to reduce the repetitiveness of all of this, you can also do a basic form of inheritance. So for example, in this case, the Trinity tool inherits the spades tool, uh, but overrides the cause value. So the nice thing about this is that when you override cores, now if you see here, mem is a computed expression. So mem is evaluated as late as possible. And therefore that becomes 16 into four uh, instead of the previous value. So it's a, it's a nice way of kind of doing late binding of the values. Um, so, so ultimately, I guess our goal is to reduce or eliminate the need for each admin to rediscover ideal settings for running a tool. So, so the idea would be, can we benefit from this shared knowledge pool uh, somewhere? So uh, TPV essentially allows you to specify a remote URL with a list of rules to be loaded, and you can have a, immediately have a highly functional Galaxy instance with recommended settings, uh, mostly based on the use Galaxy Star Federation. We just point to the file and go. So I think that makes that initial bootstrapping problem of a Galaxy instance much easier. Uh, and uh, of course, everyone can contribute back to that database. So, so let's, now that you have a basic overview of how this whole thing works, uh, let's take a quick demo of how you can set it up. Um, so for that, let me just share my, uh, an additional screen, uh, one second. All right, okay. Can you see my terminal? Yeah, okay. So I have uh, a freshly cloned instance of Galaxy, which I'm just gonna start afresh. Uh, and uh, I, I've installed it and you know cloned it and started it up once so it's fast second time, but otherwise it's a fairly standard uh, clone. Uh, so let's start that up. Uh, but before we do that, let's see what settings we have to edit. So the first setting I'll edit is the Galaxy uh, YML file. Uh, is this big enough or does it need to be bigger? Can you see the text? Is that, is that okay? That's much All better. Right. All right. So uh, we're gonna look for watch job rules. Um, okay. Oops, sorry. So let's do big. Okay. Uh, so this is the setting we need to uh, change so that TPV will automatically reload the rules. I, uh, I can't see the what you're showing. I don't know if something happened. Oh, okay. Uh, let me try again. Um, Oh, something did happen. <laughs> it got detached. The tab got detached. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, dear. Okay, never mind. I'll share all three. Yeah. Okay, can you see it now? Uh, 
Not yet. How about now? Yeah, now? No. I, I just see the, yeah, it's just see your terminal, but there's nothing. Nothing on it? Okay. Uh, that, that times the charm. How about now? No? No, I see. <laughs> Great, thank you. You see it? All right, awesome. Okay, so, so what job rules is what we need to be uh, specifying. Uh, and once you do that, um, uh, Galaxy will start monitoring those files. So next, uh, once the, I've already set it to polling. Uh, I don't know, that's the only setting that works for some reason for on my Mac, but in any case, uh, that's all done. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is to create a new job conf file. Uh, uh, so into that job conf, I'm just gonna paste this block. Okay, uh, so as you can see, all it does is to define a local runner uh, and uh, this define a dynamic destination, uh, which is the default destination called the TPV dispatcher. And all it is, is just a dynamic Python destination, right? Uh, so it's a fairly standard one. And then that function in turn is parameterized with the config files which it needs. So we need to now, so the TPV config file is passed in here and we need to next create that file. So uh, let me do that next. So into the rules file, we'll just add some basic, um, uh, feel free to interrupt at any time if you have any questions or something. Um, so, so in this particular, um, file, uh, we start off with just defining some global settings and we just say everything inherits from default. And uh, that's just a basic tool that everybody will inherit from. And then we just def define this default tool, tool, which is defined as abstract, meaning that it can't be scheduled. It's just, a, just the abstract definition for all default tools. And there we define cause is two and mem is three times that. So essentially, this will be what every tool will use by default once TPV is activated. And then we also define the destinations, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we route it to the local runner with these two parameters. So the local mem is set to the mem value that's computed and local slots to the calls map. So, so whatever the tool leaves, at the end of the day, the, the appropriate values will be inserted here and those parameters will go into the runner. So once you do that, let's start that galaxy. Uh, we'll have to uh, wait for a few seconds, but um, while we do that, let's prep for the next thing, which is to upload some data and see whether these rules have applied. So we should expect to see the local slots and local mem parameter on the galaxy instance. So, Give it a few seconds. <clears throat> All right. Nope, not yet. All right, that's taking a while. Okay, there we are. Okay, so we have the, let me create a new history uh, and upload the data. Okay. And let's just see whether the correct settings went in. Uh, and yes, we can see here, uh, I hope the font is not too small, but uh, yeah, we can see the local mem and the local slots being computed and sent in for the tool. Okay, so now let's expand on this by adding another destination. Uh, so let's assume that we have a Slurm cluster at our disposal. Uh, and let's see whether we can get that some cluster to, uh, let's see if they can get the jobs to route to that slum cluster. Now. 
So can you see my, uh, not, uh, not the Galaxy window, but my uh, editor window? Can you see that or not? You can, oh, okay, great. The font's a little so, small, but we see it. All right, I'll make that bigger as well. Better? All right. So here I'm going to define this additional destination uh, called slum. I mean, it's not really slum because I didn't have one, but um, I'm just going to route it to the local runner anyway. But we are going to pretend it's slum. And the critical thing is that for slum, we need to have the native specification parameter, which is what slum uses to actually enforce the cores and mem value. So we just need to generate the native specification and parameterize with the cores and mem that we calculated through TPV. Uh, so that's what we've done here. Uh, note that uh, cores is, uh, sorry, mem is again a computed expression here. Uh, and yeah, that's that should do it. So, oh, so before we do that, we also want to make sure that we have two destinations now and we want to send all our new jobs let's assume to the slum destination and only run specifically tagged tools on the local destination, we can do that by uh, simply specifying an additional tag. So, so since none of the tools have this tag specified, nothing is gonna execute here by default. So we should expect to see the job, all the jobs now going to slum. So let's see whether that happens. Again, uh, this should now take effect immediately. Uh, let's see whether that happens. Okay. So yes, uh, we can see here, it says we're loading PPV rules uh, and we should expect this to work now. So I'm gonna upload a new file or get some nonsense. Um, all right, and let's go see whether the, uh, New settings are in effect, and yes. So we can now see the native specification going in, and again, uh, it has been, the parameters have been computed. Um, so now, if you want to actually uh, send something to our local destination, uh, we can do that too. So let's say that all upload jobs, we want to send it to our local destination. So we go back. Um, edit the TPP file again and say the data fetch tool, which is the upload tool, will require the local destination now. So then we should expect all upload jobs to always go to the local destination and not have the native specification. And instead, it should have the local slots and local name instead. So again, we'll see whether that happens. It's going to go back, upload a new job. Uh, And yeah, sure enough, it's now local slots and local mem for this. Uh, okay, so so now that we've got the basics working, let's see how we can now like hook into the shared database. So to do that, uh, we are going to have to edit the uh, job conf file. So what we're going to do is add a new config file pointing to the shared database. So once you do this, it will just load all these files in order and the uh, ones that are defined later overwrite the ones that come first. So essentially we, what we are saying here is that the local rules file will override the shared database. Uh, in this case though, we are gonna have to restart Galaxy. Uh, so I'm just going to stop. And start it again. And while it's starting, let's take a look at the shared database file that we just pointed to. Uh, and if you go to the very top, you see that it looks the same. We had some default calls, uh, a default tool defined. We have a whole bunch of tools defined and their memory and post requirements. So here we see that in this particular case, it just defines mem, meaning that cores will be the default, whatever it is. Um, and some tools define scheduling tags. Some define additional environment options. 
uh, also containing computed expressions and so on. Uh, and uh, some may even have uh, dynamic rules, uh, like for example, uh, in this, uh, no, I saw some somewhere. Anyway, uh, yeah, there we are. So something like this. So, no one, so all these, yeah. No one, quick question. Yes, uh, when you refer uh, to the mem uh, value, how yeah. does it know to pick uh, the value from the default uh, block and not from uh, some subsequent tool? So the so when the tool is dispatched, uh, it's matched against these available tools. So this is a regex match. So each of the regexes that match are applied. So for example, if you uh, if you dispatch the uh, this particular tool, uh, we'll end up matching this, and the cores and mem values of this will be applied. Does that does that answer your question, or did uh, I not? Uh, when uh, you know, on the on the other screen uh, okay. where you compute uh, the value in the other config file, I believe it yeah. was. Yeah. Yes, Is this it? one. So yeah. uh, under destination, under local, local mem, mm -hmm. you refer to mm -hmm. mem in um, in squiggly brackets. Yeah. Uh, and that is picked from tools default, uh, where it says mem colon cores multiplied by three. Correct. So yeah. how does it how does it know to grab that value and not mm -hmm. say if under tools you would have another tool which would specify its own mem value? Oh, because at the point of routing, we know which tool it is, right? So at, at that point, when you get to the destination, so the first thing it will do is match the tool. Uh, so figure out which, so for example, we, we executed the data fetch tool. It will match the data fetch tool. Uh, so by default, data fetch, all the uh, it inherits from default. So all of the settings from default will be applied, and then the overrides will be applied. Right. So, so we know it's a data fetch tool now, and then we start matching it against the destination. So the available destinations are local and slum. Uh, so we specifically requested the local destination. So here it goes. And there we've already computed the cores and mem, which it just inserts here. That, I see. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you. All right. Um, okay. So we now have this shared rule file. So let's run a tool that's defined here and see whether those two, uh, whether those settings come into effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the uh, uh, I think intersect intervals. Uh, yeah. So bed tools intersect bed. So that's defined here, uh, and that tool has a memory setting of forty. So we should expect to see the cores being what we defined, whatever it is, yeah, core should be, I think, two by default, and mem should be 40, right? Because we override the uh, uh, cores value and set it to 40 on the shared database. So let's see what happens now. Uh, I'm going to run uh, intersect intervals. And just run it. And sure enough, it's uh, 40 gigs of RAM have now been allocated to it. So essentially we are now using the remote database. So if you wanted to, we can override that locally and just tweak a value. For example, let's try that next. I'm just going to um, edit, edit this file and say, okay, into set bed, should instead use only 10 gigs of memory and also passing this custom parameter that I want. Uh, let's rerun the tool. See whether those, whether that gets all written now. And yeah, sure enough, it's now 10 gigs. So by, by bootstrapping your instance with the shared database and then adding your overrides on top, you can have a lot of control over uh, exactly how you want things to run. And you can even uh, override rules. So you can ID a specific rule and override that rule uh, if you don't want it to work or something like that. Or, uh, yeah. So that kind of concludes the demo. I just wanted to give a quick flavor of how you might you know, set it up and use it in practice. Uh, so if you were to go back to our slides, 
Um, so what's currently happening, I guess, uh, just to talk about the current developments. So there's a lot of work going into the shared database. So people are adding more tools and the resource requirements, scaling rules, uh, and a lot of that is coming from the Use Galaxy Star Federation. Uh, as at the moment, most of the major sites, including I believe Galaxy Main, I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, certainly use Galaxy EU and EU have uh, switched to using TPV. Um, so this is the place, therefore, where community contributions would be really valuable. So if you kind of have a knowledge, because all this knowledge is distributed amongst a large number of people. And uh, uh, so if you have a notion of the resource requirements for a specific tool, just uh, and how to scale those requirements with size and so on, so please consider in initiating a pull request and uh, you know uh, just augmenting the database. So we also have a GTN tutorial now, and the admin training content has been updated to use TPV by default. And finally, there's a lot of tooling that has come up to assist admins. For example, there's now a TPV dry run command. Uh, that allows you to check whether a tool might be scheduled, where a tool might be scheduled, and what the resources, what resources would be allocated without actually running the tool. You can just do it on the command line and check where the tool might get scheduled. There are also some Ansible roles for setting up TPV if you need, and a lot of con convenience methods for comparing tool versions, parameters, and so on. Uh, so if we were to now take a brief look at the future, um, so some of the things that are planned on the horizon is one thing that might be really interesting and useful is to integrate some of the outputs from the NIH funded cost modeling project from Anvil. So where the project's aim is to estimate resource utilization for tools and workflow. So these estimates could be really, really valuable to kind of further fine tune these resource requirements. And also as part of the project, we are hoping that we'll see some machine learning models that come out uh, that can be trained on historical use galaxy star federation data, and that could more accurately predict what these resource requirements might be. Uh, so we can just plug that in as a function into TPV. So most of these rules will probably be simplified into just a couple of lines, and then we just add our overrides on top if you want to tweak things. Um, and another thing we are hoping to do maybe during the GCC code fest is to add support for clearly explaining why TPV chose a particular destination uh, and show which rules affected that decision. Because as these things become more complex, I mean, there are more rules, more tags, and you know, more interactions and so on, you can really make things very complicated if you want to. And uh, it becomes, you know, it, it's necessary to see, okay, why, where, where did this rule come from? Is it from a remote database? Is it local? What happened? Uh, I mean, obviously there's no substitute for keeping it simple, but uh, we need to provide this assistance, I think, as the number of rules and so on go. Uh, so that kind of brings things to a close. Uh, so these are some links to more information. Uh, and these are some of the people who made all of this happen and are keeping the ball rolling with uh, TPV. So uh, I think we can just, uh, if there are any questions and comments, we can switch to that. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for your presentation, Nguyen. Right. Does anybody have questions, comments? I have a, a quick question, and it's more of a, a usage question. It's something I've been uh, meaning to look up how to do. And if that's uh, pos if it's possible to uh, route jobs to destinations um, or use particular configurations based on uh, a history tag in Galaxy. Um, yes, I think that may be possible. I'm not 100. Well, I'm assuming that information is available to the job, right, at the time of dispatch. And if it is, then it should definitely be possible because you can just interrogate the job object 
and write a rule because we can write arbitrary Python code here, right? So we can just look at the job object, look at the parameters, look at any other relevant information and make a decision saying, yeah, add this, add this tag or add this calls and mem values and so on. So I think that should be possible, yes. So uh, in order to put it differently, anything a dynamic destination can do, a TPV rule can do, because all of the context that's provided to a dynamic destination is available to a TPV rule. So you, you have the app object, you have the job object, you can just uh, you know find everything you need. You can query the database, uh, anything you want to do really, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll take try and take a deeper look into that. Yeah, yeah maybe this is not a, a question for you though. Um, like that reload thing, mm -hmm. I mean, it was super cool until uh, the link to the database came into place. So if we have a, another external file, like you know, we've got to restart these. Uh, it's handlers. Um, I don't know. I mean, would it be nice to you know have an admin panel saying like reload these uh, configs by hand without having to reboot the process or uh, you know, some way to sort of poll for a change in the remote um, remote file and do that periodically? I don't know. Just some way to marry the two. I don't know if you'd want to watch the remote file, but we have like, you know, reload data tables tasks that run on, on Celery. I mean, you could write a little task to do it, I guess. So like by, from the admin, just say reload. Yeah, like you go into the admin, you click reload tool data tables or whatever. It would work the same way. <clears throat> I mean, there's also the watching of the, the data tables, right? But since it's a remote file, I don't think you'd want to, you know, it's not like there's a file system hook for it, you know. Yeah. Just to get a sense of, uh, I mean, is uh, anybody here using TPV at the moment or, or have has used it in the past? Have So this is all new to you, right? So that's, I guess, hopefully good. <laughs> well, I used uh, TPV when we were uh, doing our last benchmarking run. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. I would, I would have a, a quick, easy question. I guess, I guess we can all like uh, create roles for groups, roles, and decide destinations for groups of users, or, or and so on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the same things apply. You can use tags on them and you can match up roles with users, with uh, tools and so on. So, uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. okay. Uh -huh. Has there been any thought to try? Well, so the rules that are in the shared database, is that sort of the, the, the bare minimum needed to run or... I guess what's the is the intent there that those rules reflect the minimum needed to run the tool, and then you know if you have special considerations, you customize locally. Uh, they're more or less, I, I I would say more like recommended settings from past experience from the Use Galaxy Star Federation. So some of them yep. are like massive. Uh, you know, you see like uh, let me just take a look here. Uh, 80, 100, I mean, stuff that you <laughs> Some high memory have. stuff. <laughs> exactly. So you might not have any, have those resources locally. Uh, I mean, assuming you can still run that tool, there are ways in TPV to clamp it down so that, you know, you load the shared database, but you say, you know, I have only this many calls locally, so clamp it down to this. Uh, there's a setting oh, called okay. uh, max accepted codes and max accepted mem, and then you can force it at the destination to a particular maximum value, uh, and that way um, kind of control it. Yeah. So it would just, if you had something specified as 80 in the default, then you clamped it to 24 
gigs of RAM yes. or whatever. It would just yes. try to use 24. Yeah. That's okay, right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, I guess the shared database becomes uh, next to unusable for all but the biggest. Um, well, uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to figure database. out. It's, yeah. 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 And and I guess the other thing about the shared database is, is that it is kind of general because you can't, we probably can't have very specific rules. So the idea there is that you define essential things that you're likely to have in every environment. So there is a bit of a least lowest common denominator approach there, but uh, because with this, because you can clamp things down, we are not, I think nobody's too worried about the cores and then of it, yeah. Yeah, with the clamping, that sounds like a good approach. Yeah. I think the, the difficult part here is to kind of infer the rules uh, because if you have scaling rules, you know, if you have this much, if the input size is this much, maybe you allocate this much uh, memory or something. Uh, that's a matter of experience, I guess. That's part of the problem, I think. If you can switch to more like a machine learning approach or something that might be more appropriate than, you know, better. Yeah, kind of related to that. I, was, I mean, as I look through these values, um, I'm wondering where they came from for these defaults here. I, I guess it's just, you know, some combination of community experience, developer experience of like what a typical run is, but tip, I don't know, some of these are all over the place where typical could mean very different things. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, they're, they're entirely from seeded by uh, the values used in use galaxy EU and AU. So, uh, so yeah, they do, def they, they, there is a fair bit of variation and some of them seem to be like, oh, this didn't work, so I just pumped it up. And then <laughs> there also seem to be values that may have been, you know, just, just somebody just thought it up and it wasn't really tested, it's possible. Um, so I think that fine tuning has to happen over time. Um, yeah. One thing we could do, I think, is to check actual usage against recommended usage, uh, maybe on, on the use Galaxy Star Federation and kind of fine tune the values more. That's probably something that needs to happen at some point. Yeah. That's a good idea. Are there any other questions for Nuan? While well, we're in uh, Smorgasbord Week, it might be a good opportunity to uh, uh, try out their tutorial and uh, bug me one about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much, Nuan. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining today's community call. Uh, the next one that we'll have will be on June 15th. So I look forward to seeing you all there. Thanks, everybody. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.